Hour. Damn, son, where'd you find this? This, this, this should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Listen to me, Randy. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside, whether you're white or black or Sasquatch even. As long as you follow your dream, no matter how crazy or against the law it is. Except for Sasquatch. If you're Sasquatch, the rules are different. Forget it, Meatwad. I'm a circus freak. That's all I'll ever be. Whatever. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. And I remember being on set with Salma and going, so after Maurizio dies, maybe it gets hot. Yeah. <laughs> Lady- Once the man dies, then we get turned on. Gaga wanted a romantic turn for her and Salma Hayek's characters in House of Gucci, and she got it. Uh, it sounds like it's not going to be pretentious. When you hear the name House of Gucci, it sounds like a very humble movie. Also... I don't know. Do you find Lady Gaga attractive? 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. I do not. I will always see her as meat dress Lady Gaga. The superstar revealed in a recent cast Q&A that she pushed for a sex scene with Selma that ultimately didn't make it into the movie. Yeah, Selma Hayek seems like she's kind of private. She doesn't mind showing off that body of hers, but you never really see her do anything sexual. So when you have Lady Gaga going, I wouldn't mind banging you on camera, you know, Selma Hayek's like, I'm I'm good. But does that mean it's on the cutting room floor forever? Oh, yeah. According to Gaga, never say never. (gasps) There's a whole... Just now with Selma Hayek. Whole side of this film that you did not see, yeah. where Pina and I developed a sexual relationship. Oh wow! <laughs> Sounds like she's really kinky. Like she's really going through a midlife crisis, and all she wants to do is bang. And Selma Hayek's like, "I'm, I'm good. I'm good." Should I? And should nobody, I? Nobody. Should I tell them? It just. It, okay. Yeah. The director's cut. Who knows? <laughs> Lady Gaga, it's time for you to make an OnlyFans. Gaga has earned raves for her performance in the award season fave as Patrizia Reggiani. Uh, you know that movie sucks in if the award show's like it. Oh, it's, it's the uh, show that represents the everyday common man and woman, an award show where they're out of touch and they think they're better than us. Who served 18 years in prison for hiring a hitman to murder her ex-husband, yeah. Maurizio Gucci, played by Adam Driver. Oh yeah, get rid of the husband, man, we'll bang. Selma portrays TV psychic and Patrizia's friend. And- oh, so not only is the movie about fake people, it's about someone with a fake job, a psychic. Oh, this movie sounds great. Convicted accomplice, Pina Oriema. Gaga praised director Ridley Scott for giving her idea a chance, and Selma still seems amused that her castmate dared to go there. <laughs> Selma's amused, but she's like, get the hell away from me, Mitras. Happy hour. Happy hour. The hour will be right back. I'm just kidding. Lady Gaga, so attractive. Yeah, she's beautiful. Oh, she's gorgeous. This following segment was brought to you by FitzAgeFitness.com. Fit underscore Sage underscore Fitness on Instagram. FitzAgeFitness.com. Devin Prasad, when I tell you that he is the best in the Bay, I am a man of my words. I would not lie to you. FitzAgeFitness.com. You can work out with him in person or if you don't live in Florida, don't worry. Don't have a panic attack even though you're missing out. Go to FitzAgeFitness.com and when you go there, Tell him I sent you, and you can do virtual workouts or in-person workouts, and he'll change your life forever. Happy hour. Happy hour. Like a uh, $9,000 prostitute, please. Oh, do you have nine $1,000 ones? 
Yeah, good. And if you got an albino, send her up too. In uh, like 20 minutes, I'm going to be asleep, so get him up here. I had like half a bottle of melatonin, six beers, this whole f***ing bucket of chicken. Oh, the Sandman is coming. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Did you guys hear the breaking news? I'll let you know in a second. First, I'm going to let you know, 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. And you can Snapchat me, Hoppy Radio. So, I never was good at sports growing up. And by me saying I wasn't good at sports growing up, it's implying that I was even okay at sports. I was atrocious. I was horrendous. I was always the last one to be picked during gym class. I contributed nothing. But guess what? Due to my quarter-life crisis and me realizing that I'm not going to be on this planet forever, I am now learning how to play basketball. Thanks to my trainer. And my good friend, Devin Prasad of FitsageFitness.com and David Pezza of DavePezza.com. They're getting me into shape. We're working out. We're shooting the hoops. And I look really uncoordinated, but getting out of my comfort zone to do it. And I know a few, so I, this, this doesn't bother me. I'm just explaining. I'm doing something called Hoppy's Hoops where I'm doing a series where it goes from, oh, yeah, look at Hoppy. He's horrible at basketball. To I becoming really good at basketball. Like That's my dream, and that's what I'm going to manifest, and I'm going to do on camera. I'm going to get good at basketball. No, I'm not going to be in the NBA. I got bad back, uh, but I'm going to be good. I'm already there. I just don't have the skills yet. So I put up a few videos on all my social media. Ryan Happy Radio, Happy in the Morning, Happy Hour Radio, all those accounts. Follow them. I uh, put up the video. I put up an introduction video. And then I put up a video of me playing. And I put up another video, right? I put up a new one today. And there was a certain person who works in radio in this town who I'm not going to say who it was, but I had multiple people go, oh, that's a bad look, bro. That's an awful look, bro. You're playing basketball on camera and you're not good. It was implied with all these comments I got. And I was like, first of all, I'm winning because I got you to bring up the comments. And second of all, I'm awful at basketball, bro. Hang in your lane, bro. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm not going, yeah, I'm making the NBA. I'm having fun. And to me, that brings content to the radio waves. All the announcers are going to break down football and have no personality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really roll that way. I'm goofy. I'm awkward. I'm here for a good time. Not a long time. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Pamela Anderson and her husband of one year, Danny Hayhurst, are no more. <laughs> I didn't even know she was married. She is so washed up. <laughs> the 54-year-old is reportedly filing for divorce. She's only 54? I would have thought she was in her 60s, man. She has really been around. The 54-year-old is reportedly filing for divorce in Canada, where the couple have been living, Rolling Stone claims. Yeah. A source told the publication that the Baywatch star's short-lived romance with the bodyguard was a pandemic whirlwind that True. fizzled out, adding, quote... Pamela loves as authentically as she lives. Oh, yeah, by hanging out with everybody. The duo tied the knot on Christmas Eve in 2020. And that sounds like a crisis. Let's get married on Christmas Eve in 2020. 
Pamela's Vancouver Island home. Vancouver Island, what a happening place. You know there's a lot of sex that goes down in Vancouver Island. Let me see your... Cu- uh, never mind. This is the fifth marriage for the barbed wire actress who famously made headlines in January 2020 with another trip down the aisle. Yeah. She married Hollywood mogul John Peters. Oh, a big fan of his work, John Peters. Shut up! I will say one thing. She is pretty cool in the fact that she marries just random ass millionaires. Like, she's not marrying, like, the elite of the elite. Yeah, she's been washed up for four decades, but I'm saying, like... You have a chance with her slightly. As long as you got money, you don't have to be famous. Who the hell is John Peters? And the pair went their separate ways just 12 days later. Oh, Pam's- you get 12 days to be married to her. By the 11th day, you're like, thank God it's over with. And she feels the same way. Love life has sparked constant fascination. Uh, fascination in the 90s when she's banging out Tommy Lee, but no one's going, oh my God, Pamela Anderson's love life. Please tell me more. Her turbulent marriage to Tommy Lee is the center of a new Hulu series. Gross. Set to debut in February. What, a walk to the HPV clinic? A walk there? Is that what the name of the documentary is? Hanging out, wearing three condoms? The eight-part limited series chronicles the couple's former romance that turned into one of Hollywood's biggest sex tape scandals. They just look like HPV. Like, they they post their child for it. Both of them. Lily James and Sebastian Stan dive into the world-famous controversy for Pam and Tommy. <gasps> they were like the original Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly. The 32-year-old told Netta Porter's Porter that she reached out to the mom of two ahead of shooting the show, but never got a response. Yeah. Access Hollywood recently spoke to Sebastian, and he revealed that he did speak to Tommy Lee about taking on the role. Oh, true. Can we just get into the Tommy Lee of it all? <laughs> I love when the celebrity news reporters get all spicy. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You know, I was actually FaceTiming Sebastian while he was shooting that. And he was, and he was getting uh, BJ from some assistant intern. It was like, really? yes, this is Tommy a couple times. Yeah. Oh, really? Like, yes. I mean, yeah. dude, this is so impressive. I, yeah. Uh, talk I to me a little bit about it. I actually called her asking for advice because I... Uh, I don't know what's worse, the movie or this press junket. I knew she had worked on, on Tammy Faye, and I was yeah. trying. I was trying to do... You know, to work on the voice and all. Oh, what a bunch of good movies! The one about Tammy Faye. That sounds riveting. Stuff. So I was, I was asking her for pointers. Yeah. Yeah. She, she saw some of it. Oh, she did. Have you reached out to or heard from Tommy at all? And I'm also. Ah, Tommy's busy figuring out where his life's gone. More vodka. Also curious, uh, your first reaction to seeing Lily as Pam. Yeah. Um, what? it was, it was wild. I, the, the weird, the, the weird thing about Lily was that actually until the end of the shoot, I felt like I never met Lily James. I mean, I mm. never even had seen that she had had brown hair. The end- man, he can be an actor or whatever, but man, you got no personality there, bro. You're like a talented Scott Disick. You know what I'm saying? Entire time, you know? So it was, it was pretty wild. And, uh, and yeah, I, I thought. Yeah. Out of respect uh, of just simply playing a person that's still alive and, and it's about their life. You know, I, I didn't really know he's alive. And, and I mean, has there ever been an example of someone who's alive technically, but not literally? You know what I mean? Hey, Tommy Lee's alive, is he? And fortunately, I was able to sort of touch base and say, hey, I, I don't know who you, who, who you think I am. I don't know why you're talking, man. You are not really getting to the point. But then again, when you're playing a movie about Tommy Lee, you're not really going that much out of character. You're coming off like a dish. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment was brought to you by the Tampa Bay Hot Sauce Company. When I tell you that the Tampa Bay Hot Sauce Company is the best in the Bay, I'm a man of my words. I would not lie to you. I would not steer you in the wrong direction. Okay. When you go to TampaBayHotSauce.com, there has all the locations where you can buy their product in person if you live in the Tampa Bay area and Florida, uh, which is in Florida, makes sense. And then if you don't live here, well, you're missing out on the greatest time ever, but you also can purchase their product online. And then tag them on Instagram and Twitter at Tampa Bay Hot Sauce, TampaBayHotSauce.com, at Ryan Happy Radio, and let us know what you cook up. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy now. 856-49 Happy. Whoa, hey. <laughs> oh, hey, hey. It's, uh, I mean, it's like a koala bear crapped a rainbow in my brain. <laughs> Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Happy Hour. Watch out. 
Hoppy is about to rant. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Hi. How are you? That's good to hear. The kids are growing up so fast. Oh, happy hot topic. The comedy world has lost a favorite. Yeah. Louis Anderson died Friday morning in Las Vegas following. So like I woke up today, like every day that I wake up in the morning, I'm like, oh my God, I'm alive again. But then there's nothing worse than waking up and like you're like, could this be my last day ever? And then you wake up to a New York Post alert that both Louis Anderson and Milo die in the same day. And you're just like, ah, death, get away from me, even though I have no control over that. <laughs> you piece of shit. A battle with blood cancer, Access Hollywood confirms the legendary stand-up and Emmy-winning actor was 68 years old. And His acting on Baskets, I believe it's probably on Hulu. It's definitely on FX On Demand. He played a woman, like a very overweight mother. And his acting, I always forgot when I was watching Baskets, I always forgot that I was watching Louis Anderson. Like, you know when you watch somebody, like let's say Jeffrey Tambor on that uh, show that was on Amazon, and like you know that it's him playing a woman and he's doing a great job, but you see Jeffrey Tambor's face. That was not baskets at all. I literally thought I was looking at a woman. Like when Louis Anderson dressed up as a woman, I was like, I saw that woman last week in Largo. Like it was very much, um, it was very believable. I'm trying to load a clip here. Here's a, her going into Costco. So it, it shows Zach Galifianakis walking right behind his mom and his mom is Louis Anderson who's about to go into Costco. I That's Louis Anderson. Oh, what do we have here? <laughs> pizza kits today. Pizza kits? All the ingredients <laughs> in one. The candy. This is That's a woman. That's rest in peace, Louis Anderson playing a woman. Genius. It's organic. It's a great activity for kids. Oh, I've got two boys at home who go wild for this. <laughs> oh. Oh, who knows? The boys eat a lot. You know that. Yeah. And that way, you know, you got one for each boy. Two? At least. All right. And if you want to just be safe, I'd take three, you know. Why Therefore, not? you have them for another day. It's a very special night. Oh, really? <laughs> mm -hmm. well, that's one. It's a family night. Family nights are special. I'll take one more. You should, one for the road. Okay, thank you. You enjoy your night. Organic, huh? It's good for it's you. <laughs> Rest in peace, Louis Anderson. Everyone needs to go back and watch Baskets. Ah. Rest in peace. Anderson's rep issued a lengthy statement on his life and legacy, noting the highlights of his four-decade career, which kicked off with a breakthrough performance on The Tonight Show in 1984. That was when going on The Tonight Show was like, you know, a big deal. And now everyone's like, get away from me, Jimmy Fallon. You smell like booze in midlife crisis. And continued with memorable film roles in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Coming to America, and more. I forgot he was in Coming to America. Anderson gained further popularity for numerous comedy specials yeah. and other TV appearances over the years, including an acclaimed hosting stint on Family Feud. I don't remember that. He was I remember Steve Harvey thinking he's funny all the time because he talks really loud. Oh, where have I heard that before? On Family Feud. He was most recently hailed for his performance as the mother of Zach Galifianakis' character yeah. on the FX series Baskets from oh, 2016 yeah. to 2019. He took home an outstanding... That was only on for three years, four years? Fully was on for 10 years. That was underappreciated. ...supporting actor Emmy for the role. Yeah. As news of Anderson's death broke, celebrities shared tributes and their favorite memories of him on social media. Like who? Uh, Gilbert Godfrey. This photo is very sad now. And it's got Bob Saget and Louis Anderson in it. And he says, rest in peace, Bob Saget and Louis Anderson. Both good friends that will be missed. Oh, so we're not going to read the tweets. You're going to... Okay. Uh, here's one from uh, 
Viola Davis. Rest in peace, Louis Anderson. You were as gracious and kind as you were funny. Rest well. Keep on laughing in heaven. Oh, yeah, totally. Heaven drill. Uh, this is from Henry Winkler. Louis Anderson, your generosity of spirit will cover the world from above. You are. We are so lucky you were on earth for a moment, spreading your humor all over those bars of living gold. Goodbye. The goodbye is kind of depressing, you know? Uh, Jeffrey Ross. When Milof died, Louis Anderson was like, what's the point of living? I love them both. Uh, Michael Keane. Baskets was a phenomenal second act for Louis Anderson. I wish he got in the third. I agree, but that second act, like that's almost kind of like implying that Louis didn't do enough. Because that second act, like you never know when you're going to die. But that second act on Baskets, that's some of the best TV ever, Michael Keane. Michael McKean, uh, that is some of the best TV you will ever see ever. So it wasn't like he half-assed his second act. That was a memorable second act. Who else tweeted here? Um, Eric Stone Street, who uh, was the uh, guy Cam on Modern Family. I don't know if you can tell, but I have a hard time saying words to begin with ST. It's called my stutter, and I'm working on it. So let me do that again. Eric Stone Street. I did it. He tweeted, Louie was a comedian I saw as a high schooler in Kansas City. To meet him and get to know him in L.A. so many years later was very much a highlight and a pinchy moment. He was a very kind man. Rest in peace, Louie, and don't forget the cranberries. I don't know what the hell that means. That must just be good old Kansas City humor. Haley, Haley Joel Osment spent many hours on the road not long ago listening to his comedy and I think everyone in the car cracked up what a king okay so everybody misses Louis Anderson I do I never met him but his acting in baskets you have to go see it one of a kind absolutely positively hilarious <sighs> let me take a deep breath because I'm recording this on Friday, January 21st, 2022, 4 p.m. I'm going to be at work in 12 hours, but life's short. I want to record a podcast because I'm getting a lot of cloud from my times recently on the bone, which if you're listening today and it's uploaded on a Friday, January 21st, tomorrow at 1 p.m., Saturday, January 22nd, I will be filling in for Migs and Swig. So I'm very much full of energy. And when I come across all these articles about these famous people dying, it makes me kind of sad. So, me loaf, rest in peace. My advice to a young star is be yourself. Yeah. Don't me me loaf definitely was himself. He definitely was good at that. My advice to a young star is be yourself. Don't be anybody else. Yeah. Don't don't think you're better than somebody. Don't think you're above anybody ever. Because I never have and never will. Yeah, Meatloaf was a very classy guy. He lived kind of a sad life. He ended up kind of living by himself and whatever, which is what happens when you get old. But uh, yeah, you definitely could tell he was really good at being himself. Legendary musician Meatloaf, whose real name was Marvin Lee Aday, has... I would call myself Meatloaf too. ...died. I've been called Meat since I was four days old because yeah. I was born bright red. So my... That right, makes sense father yeah who was a policeman uh-huh he said my son looks like nine and a half pounds of ground chill <laughs> made on that crater he was 70 it sounds like he didn't really like his dad the way he did that accent did not make his dad sound smart four years old i can't really play this because we got copyright laws and i'll have to take this out that was 23 minutes and they played some of his music uh but rest in peace to the king whatever the hell he did and didn't really like his music but rest in peace Nick Jonas and Priyanka Chopra Jonas have officially welcomed their first child <gasps> in a surrogate, according oh. to a surprise announcement. And I think we speak for everyone when- Oh, uh, I thought she put it in work secretly. Oh, uh, surrogate. Not saying that's not a big deal, but come on now. Come on now. They're not even in like the same continent half the time. How the hell are they supposed to have a kid now without a surrogate? Come on now. We say we are shook. <gasps> no. Were you so shook? Was your day elevated so much that now you got more money in the bank account? Now you got a better car? Because Priyanka and Nick Jonas had a kid? Nope. No idea this one was coming. Yeah. Priyanka and Nick sent fans reeling when they revealed today that they have quietly and secretly become parents mm -hmm. in a surprise announcement posted to social media. Nick and Priyanka posted matching statements to their Instagram page. 
sounds very celebrity like which i kind of like because that means they're living in a moment and not putting up posts about how good parents they are like farah abraham because then if you kept doing that that means you suck pages reading we are overjoyed to confirm that we have welcomed a baby via surrogate yeah yeah we just did not have this one on our 2022 bingo cards <laughs> way to keep it under wraps guys oh wow the couple yeah they like to keep it under the wraps she's not in bed they don't really have sex together seems like they don't you can't produce a kid I mean, unless she literally or he literally cannot get the job done. I mean, come on now. Also added, we respectfully ask for privacy during this special time as we focus on our family. Thank you so much. Yeah. Doesn't it feel like they already had like four kids? Like I forgot that they didn't have a kid yet. And we will respect your privacy. Maybe if you didn't make a post about it, then you could ultimately respect your privacy. But by putting up respect our privacy, you kind of are looking for attention. So shut up. Oh, respect our privacy. We're going to do that by putting up a post that's going to get 7 million views saying respect our privacy. So we have 7 million people looking at us. Oh, but please respect our privacy. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment was brought to you by WestChasePrinting.com. Posters, business cards, yard signs, whatever the hell you need printed up. WestChasePrinting.com can do that. Yeah. West Chase Printing and DJ Tone Tampa on Instagram. When I tell you that they are the best in the Bay, I'm a man of my words. I would not lie to you. So here's how it goes down. You go to westchaseprinting.com. And when you get that invoice, if you had not heard this live read and you got the invoice, they were going to hook you up anyway with a great deal. But here's the thing. When you name drop me, and you tell them I sent you, they will hook you up. Happy hour. Happy hour. Doctors say the life expectancy of the average man is now 76.2 years. <gasps> 76.2, but I'm already 38.1. I've wasted half my life. <laughs> Half my life gone, and I'm only guaranteed 38 more years. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Happy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in, too. to start this morning how with britney spears her legal battle with her father is intensifying oh man i thought it was over with it's like far from over with she continues to speak out about her growing feud with her mother and her sister yeah pop star correspondent miguel almaguer now joins us with the latest hey miguel <laughs> hey what up miguel Hey, Carson, good morning. Yes, hey. Britney Spears has been much more outspoken since being released from her conservatorship, and now she is fighting with her family members in court and online. <gasps> this morning, Britney Spears free, but still fighting. The pops. Yeah, because her dad's a see you next Tuesday. Star speaking out about her family as her legal battle with her father heats up. Jamie Spears had controlled many of his daughter's financial and personal dealings for almost 14 years. The time did fly by. And now asking that she pay his legal bills for the lengthy battle. Oh, what an asshole, dude. What a goddamn awful father. That ended the arrangement. I wish hell was real because then he would burn there. Overnight, Brittany pushing back with legal documents saying Jamie enriched himself while acting as conservator. Of course he did. With more than $6 million of over your father of the year of the singer's earnings. Yeah. Also accusing her father of abusive and bullying conduct. Yeah, he's kind of a douche. Chronic alcohol abuse. and Yeah, he seems like he's got a fat gut. Alleging an altercation between him and Britney's child. Mm. The documents allege that Jamie Spears used Britney's resources to further his own career, yeah. including an attempted cooking show. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys want to have some of this raccoon I grilled up? Used a security firm to spy on her cell phone. 
Jamie Spears has previously stated that he acted to protect Britney as her conservator. Yeah, he did act. He wasn't trying. He was just acting. And when you see these pictures of the two of them together, they don't seem like good friends. And unconditionally loves and supports his daughter. Yeah. It comes as Britney is in a public war of words oh, with yeah. her sister, <gasps> Jamie Lynn Spears, yeah. who's promoting a new book. Ah, bitch. The younger sister saying in interviews that she tried to help Britney. By, oh, but I'm helping her now by going on TV and talking about her for book sales. I'm a great woman. I'm a real feminist throughout the conservatorship how many times can i take the steps without i don't know a few more times you need to lose some weight um you know she has to walk through the door on yeah <laughs> hopefully you can fit tuesday britney posting a new fiery instagram post now deleted outlining a troubled family past implying jamie lynn found fame through her older sister. Duh! What talent does Jamie have besides getting pregnant at age 17? Wow! You really bring a lot of talent to the table. That's why all of the gigs have just come up for you the last two decades. Jamie Lynn Spears, we really gotta hire her. She brings a lot to the table. Spears describing returning home after her breakup with Justin Timberlake. Yeah, Colleen. that that was a pretty bad one. Timberlake's family all I knew for many years. Spears ending the post writing, I'm sorry, Jamie Lynn, I wasn't strong enough to do what should have been done. Slapped you and mama right across your expletive face. <laughs> Britney's legal team is fine. You know her legal team and maybe Sam, who I don't think cares about, about her, but if he did, you know they kind of go, Brittany, why are you putting up these posts? Because there's nothing dumber than when a celebrity puts up a post and they delete it. It's like everybody screenshotted it, brah. Filed a cease and desist request against her sister trying to prevent her yeah. from referencing Brittany's derogatory themes during her promotional campaign for the... Yeah. Can you imagine if that does happen and she's not allowed to talk about Brittany? Like, hi, I'm Jamie Lynn Spears. I was on a pregnant... I was on a show for uh, 18 months, two years, and then I got pregnant. And now I'm a mom. Half, I'm sort of like half a Largo, Florida. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment was brought to you by Rich Keeley, Master Barbershop. When I tell you that Rich Keeley is the best in the Bay, I'm a man of my words. I would not lie to you. I would not steer you in the wrong direction. RichKBarber.com. You can sign up for an appointment. And he's over at Salon Loft. On West Shore, on uh, Kennedy Boulevard, right next door to McDonald's. But you got to sign up for an appointment ahead of time. And then when you do, tell him I sent you and he'll hook you up. Happy hour. Happy hour. This little Bizarre. guy. Bizarre. Buddy, if I had a peanut, I'd give Bizarre. it to you. Bizarre. I love you. Bizarre. I love you. Hey, who's Bizarre. got a peanut for turtle face? Don't. He's allergic. That kill me. He never holds back, and he speaks his mind. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet that the other stations are tuned in to. Oh yeah, 856-49-HOPPY, it's 856-494-6773, you can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, you can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. appears to have regained her title as the most followed female artist on Instagram, dethroning Ariana Grande, who previously held that coveted spot for quite some time. You know, that really pissed off Ariana. 
And I'm not kidding. I'm being serious. It doesn't come as a shock that two of the world's biggest reigning pop princesses have traded off titles as the most followed female artists uh -huh. on Instagram. Yeah. But in a new turn of events, Selena Gomez, who was previously dethroned by Ariana Grande back in 2019 as yeah. the most followed, has now... So now they're really fighting each other for this. Meow! Cat fight. Now regained her throne as most followed in the musician category, a mere three. Only 291 million fans. Wow, that's a lot of people years later. Back in 2019, the swap didn't come as much of a surprise when Ariana's follower count increased solely due to post output, as well as promotion for her Thank You Next album that was released that year. And what has she really done since? I'm not saying she's not talented. I'm not saying she's not good, but what the hell has she done since? She got wiped down with Dalton Gomez. That's what it is, that lucky ass realtor. When it comes to posting regularly, Ariana did have double the posts that Selena had. So, um, quality over quantity, Ari. That's why you lost. And more frequently would share posts on her stories almost every day. You're doing it too much. Go bang out Dalton Gomez. Day. That said, when the time came this year for Selena to regain her title, more than anything, fans were extremely impressed yeah. given her social media presence. True. She posts to her page sparingly. Oh. But when she does post, we need to bow down to her. She's so wonderful, that Selena Gomez. The way she's not over Bieber. Oh, she's an inspiration. No! Happy Hot Topic! She had a picture of his son. Let me rewind this. On any other radio show, you'd be absolutely perfect or you pre-record everything, but my transitions are not always spot on, so you'll never hear me claim to be perfect a day of my life. A take two. Kanye West recently shared a picture of his son Saint to Instagram just days after claiming that his estranged wife Kim Kardashian is keeping their kids from him. Let's get into it. Oh, that sounds like, oh, this is going to end really well. Like, I think Kim Kardashian is too elite to call the Child Protective Services. Like, I just feel like she's worth more than any of them combined. So I feel like... When you're having an issue with a crazy father and you're some mom from Largo, Florida, I don't know why I keep saying Largo, but I do, probably because it's accurate, uh, you call CPS. But I feel like with Kim Kardashian, you're above Child Protective Services. Kanye West is taking to social media to show off his six year old son saint after claiming that his ex kim kardashian is keeping their kids from him amid the divorce on thursday yay took to instagram to post a rare pic of saint hanging onto a basketball rim man imagine having him as your father it's gonna be raging daddy issues and why do i say that because i am the authority on all things raging daddy issues <laughs> while wearing black athletic shorts, a black sweatshirt, and yeah. gray Yeezys. Got it. While Kanye didn't choose to caption the post, he did go on later to share the snap to his Instagram stories. Kim's like, no, just leave us alone. While the photo might just be an innocent tribute to his son, the timing of Ye's latest social media post seems a little bit unusual to some, oh, considering really? Kanye recently accused Kim of not allowing him to see their four kids kids yeah that's not that's not good that's someone you really prefer kids in a recent interview with hollywood unlocked ceo jason lee oh i'm sure jason lee really brought the hard-hitting questions he really wasn't one-sided all these interviews kanye west or antonio brown no one's really asking the hard-hitting questions they all are kind of just letting them talk so that their show can get viral yeah he was asked about his decision to buy a house directly across the road from kim which raised some serious eyebrows from fans he explained nothing with my career with this rap with this media with none of that that's gonna keep me from my children and that's what i want everybody to know kanye went on to add don't play with me don't play with my children ain't no security gonna get in between me and my children and you ain't gonna gaslight me um but he's saying don't gaslight me but then he's gaslighting people that is called being an asshole the internet is reacting after machine gun kelly revealed that the engagement ring he gave megan fox is designed to hurt if she tries to take it off oh yeah we're machine gun kelly my name is colton colson and i'm from a city in the suburbs of cleveland and now i'm this edgy rock star with megan fox who's from the rich suburbs and we have a blood relationship oh, shut up 
I hung out with MGK for 25 minutes in Cleveland. He didn't talk like, oh, yeah, the, the blood love. Shut up. Just have sex and shut up. Which has sparked a serious debate about toxicity and consent. <laughs> Can you imagine being so offended about the jewelry that Machine Gun Kelly puts on that you're going to have a debate about toxicity? And everything, um, it's okay to have a debate about toxicity if that's what you want to do. But when you do it because you're offended by Machine Gun Kelly, you're doing it for all the wrong reasons. You're doing it because you're a clout chaser that wants to get offended by anything because you have nothing going on in your life. Let's get into it. Please. It seems like Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox are taking the saying, love is pain, literally. And oh, yeah. You know what? I might be the most traditional guy ever. I just love laying there or going at it or being on my feet. I, I love just traditional sex. I don't need this blood, man. Give me this blood now, bitch. Give me this blood. Yeah. This is, this is what's turn. Oh, jeez. Can the sound effect load already? Give me the blood, bitch. Yeah, whip me hard. I've been a bad boy. Just saying. Oh, yeah, corporate America. Give it to me hard. They do give it harder than. Never. And let's just say many fans aren't too happy about it. Machine Gun Kelly and Megan's romance has always been edgy. No, it's been try hard, been grotesque. From the time they wore a pinky nail chain to a red carpet. Oh yeah, they, they brought a chain. How edgy and insane and creative. No one's ever brought a chain. To Machine Gun Kelly literally wearing a vial of Megan's blood around his neck. Oh, what? So cool, bro. I wonder what he's like, though, around the time of the month. You know what I mean? Wonder if he really digs it then, you know? I would assume her mood swings probably cause you to leave the room, and then you don't really care about the blood. But then again, I would not count that out with them. They are weird, man. Oh, you're on your period, Megan. Let me see this blood. I'm just saying, like, I wouldn't count out anything with them. I'm getting grotesque. I'm getting, I don't know why I said that. I'm getting grossed out talking about that. So we're going to move on. Um, listen, I'm so sorry, but, um, yeah, my show ain't ready. Adele tells her fans the show can't go on. No! Where else can we hear a pretentious middle-aged woman, even though she's like 32, whatever age she is. Oh, where else can we hear a woman act like it's everybody else's fault and never hers and perform to a bunch of midlife crisis 40-year-olds? No! I'm so sorry. It's been impossible. In an emotional video message shared to Instagram on Thursday, yeah. the Grammy winner announced she's postponing her Las Vegas residency. Damn it, I was going to go. And I can't give you what I have right now. Uh, whatever. No, how are we going to survive by not paying 400 bucks, Adele? You elitist. You think, oh, everyone's life is forever ruined. Um, and I'm gutted. I'm gutted. And I'm sorry it's so last minute. We've been awake for over 30 hours now trying to figure it out. And oh, whatever, man. How are you going to survive? We've been up against so much and it just ain't ready. Oh, man. Let's go ahead. Go hit up uh, Rich Paul. See what he's up to. An NBA agent dating Adele. He would never cheat. That's a guy with a lot of integrity, an NBA agent. But then again, does Adele have any integrity? Camila Cabello just reacted to her ex, Shawn Mendes' new breakup music after he teased a snippet of the song on Instagram. Let's get into it. Uh, it's really nice not dating someone back in the day when I got... Uh, dumped that was famous because then you'd have breakup songs. God, can Sean Mendez and Camila Cabello just get back together? They're not over each other at all. Sean Mendez and Camila Cabello seriously left fans shook. After if you're shook by a relationship you have no idea about, then get a hobby. After they announced back in November that they would be parting ways after dating for over two years. Yeah. Sean and Camila both promised to stay friends, and it looks like they're keeping their word. Sean oh, recently good. took to Thank God. Instagram to tease his new post breakup song and shared a video of him and a friend sitting in the backseat of a car while uh -huh. listening to new music from an iPhone. Oh, the clip cool. then cuts to Sean rocking out on his guitar in the studio. And yeah, we're going to need to hear this new full synthy track. 
No, we won't. We don't care. You're just saying that because you're a celebrity news reporter and you don't want to burn the bridge, so you're pretending to care. But deep down, you are wishing you are them. Deep down, you wish you had their clout. No! Happy Hot Topic! Are Anna Kendrick and Bill Hader dating? Yeah. Good for him. He reeks, BD. According to a new report from People, a source told the publication that the pair have been, quote, quietly dating for over a year. Quote, Anna has been dating Bill quietly for over a year. They met years ago. She's hosted Saturday Night Live and they've done a movie together, but they got together well after the movie. Oh, that's good. The source told the publication, <laughs> adding, quote, they are both very private people. Yeah, you don't really hear much from Bill. And with the pandemic, it was easy to keep it quiet. They're both hysterical. So yeah, he is the only funny part of SNL. Oh, they must keep each other laughing all of the time. She's really, really happy. God, I can't imagine dating a comedian. Axis Hollywood has reached out to the pair for comment. Yeah. The 36-year-old Troll star and the 43-year-old Curb Your Enthusiasm actor co-starred in the 2019 Disney Plus Christmas movie Noel together. Oh, that was a good one. The two tend to keep their personal life low-key, yeah. but Bill previously dated the OC alum Rachel Bilson. The pair took their relationship public at the 2020 Golden Globes and broke up six months later in <gasps> July. Bill was married to director Maggie Carey from 2006 to 2018, and they share three daughters together. Oh, that's, that's good. Seven-year-old- He seems like he'd be a good girl then. Haley, nine-year-old Harper, and 12-year-old Hannah. The Love Life star is usually pretty mum about her dating life. True. But back in May 2020, she opened up about it to Axis Hollywood's Mario Lopez. I don't care anymore. 856 a 49 happy. That's 856 494 6773. I'm going to figure it all out. I promise you. We're all, all going to learn. Are we? Source tells ET Khloe Kardashian is, quote, getting back on her A game. Oh, by talking to Tristan again? Woohoo! Self integrity! <laughs> Does not respond well with the name Chloe Kardashian. <laughs> if OJ was my father, allegedly, I'd be sad too. Following her ex, Tristan Thompson, recently admitting to fathering a son with another woman. Oh, all the NBA side checks. I love when these players bang all these side checks and then they get surprised why the side check goes forward and talks about everything that happened at night, including the girl that Antonio Brown hooked up with, the one that was licking toilet seats. Like, Antonio Brown was freaked out that she came out and said everything that happened at night the day before he freaked out. And it was like, you banged a girl who was famous for licking toilet Toilet seats. Not exactly someone you want to bring home to Thanksgiving dinner. While he was still in a relationship with her. I'm not taking any from anyone. Yeah. The source says the 37-year-old reality star has, quote, been spending time with her sisters and family, working out, eating healthy, and focusing on her mind, body, and soul. That's While crying and thinking about Tristan for some reason. As far as her relationship with Tristan, yeah. the father of her three-year-old daughter, True. True. The source adds, quote, Chloe and Tristan's relationship is strained. You don't say until next week when she'll be like, I miss you. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment was brought to you by Amir Academy of Martial Arts, 2700 22nd Street North in Edson, St. Petersburg, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 p.m. When I tell you, that he is the best martial arts and boxing trainer in all of the Bay Area. That's an understatement. That's not saying enough. He's the best martial arts and boxing trainer in the whole universe. In every universe around us. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 p.m., 2700 22nd Street North, and that's in St. Petersburg, Amir Academy of Martial Arts, amiracademy.com. Go there, get into shape, change your life forever, and tell them I sent you. Happy hour. Happy hour. Finally, I'm one of those guys who can't wait to get to work in the morning. Like a dairy cow. Oh! Oh! Oh, yes! Yes! Oh! Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. Watch out. Hoppy is about to rant. 
Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. going to turn now to Peloton. Stock is sinking, and there are questions about if the company is halting production of its popular f fitness equipment. I don't know. I just think that is the most rich, douchey thing ever. Oh, I need a Peloton bike. I need some girl that has a lot of makeup on her, some dude that's got perfectly steroid abs telling me how to go biking. Like, if you're buying a Peloton, you're just an asshole that's very middle class and saves your money, or you're rich, and you're like, I'm going to spend my money on a bike where I have to pay for a membership per month our chief business correspondent rebecca jarvis has the latest for us this morning good morning rebecca oh yeah re yeah rebecca Good morning, Michael. Morning. $2.5 billion in market value was yeah. wiped out of Peloton stock yesterday. This was the ultimate stay-at-home stock. It was a yeah, it, it was. pandemic play. Millions of people. But the pandemic, people aren't at home all day. It's almost like 2020 was two years ago, and times are a little different. Rushed out and bought Peloton bikes and treadmills during the pandemic yeah. when they were stuck at home. But, at but that was two years ago. As things have changed... Trump was also president, and gas prices were lower. A lot has changed. You're saying something doesn't last forever? Whoa! As people have been able to return to gyms, as there's more competition, yeah. fewer people are buying. The amount that you could pay for a Peloton, you could probably pay for two years' worth at LA Fitness. And you can do all the workouts online. Like, not if you don't have a bike there, but you can literally do a bike workout, get your YouTube app open on your phone, go to the gym that's 20 bucks a month, even 10. There's no reason to have a Peloton now. Two years ago, sure. Now, you look like a douche. You look like a simple-minded idiot who thinks The Office is the greatest show ever and needs a cup of Starbucks every day. You're a basic-ass bitch. Those things and becoming members of Peloton, and as a result, there was a report out yesterday yeah. suggesting that Peloton is halting production of its bikes and treads. This We can only hope. We can only hope. No! Happy Hot Topic! Did I say we can only hope? I said we can only hope. Please don't be offended. He's sorry in advance. Pete Davidson isn't afraid to make fun of himself. And I'm kind of getting there too, but the new Hoppy's Hoops basketball videos and me showing my face more, trying to emulate Jake Paul, Logan Paul, Pete Davidson, where everybody roots against a millennial because they're a millennial, but they're actually really successful. The Saturday Night Live comedian was at the 9th Annual Patrice O'Neill Comedy Benefit Concert in New York. I don't think you guys realize because they just said he was at a Patrice O'Neill Comedy Benefit. Everybody right now, go to Google, go to YouTube, look up Patrice O'Neill, Opie and Anthony, or Patrice O'Neill Comedy Specials, or Patrice O'Neill XM Radio Show. He was this African-American comedian, probably the GOAT, probably the best comedian ever. He's literally of an ex he's an example of dying too young. Hey, he was brilliant. His old days of him and Anthony Cumia and Opie and Anthony arguing is the best radio ever. So I highly, highly suggest it. Benefit concert in New York City on Tuesday. Yeah. Where he made some jokes at his own expense. Oh, that's good. There seems to be a curiosity about me. That's what my friends tell me. I was trying to figure out how to explain myself to someone because I was doing an interview. He said, according to Us Weekly. He went on to compare himself to the DVDs found in $5 bins, <laughs> such as films like Predator or Tropic Thunder. He is a good Tropic Thunder. He also, to me, is like the Scooby-Doo movie. Saying he feels like the latter film is a classic and doesn't belong in the trash, adding, quote, I'm Tropic Thunder. I'm a diamond in the trash. It's a steal. His jokes come amid his whirlwind romance with Kim Kardashian. <laughs> The 28-year-old comic and the 42-year-old Keeping Up With Our Kardashians alum kicked off the new year with a trip to the Bahamas. One person who hasn't been a fan of their relationship is Kim's ex, Kanye West. Yeah, he's crazy. I wonder if every time Pete Davidson gets a text from Kim Kardashian, if this is the ringtone. 
I wonder if every time she hits him up, let me turn this down real quick. I wonder if every time she says, hey, how's it going? If this line from Ray J is what goes. So like, let's say Kim texts him. Good morning. How are you? Oh, I told you. Man, Ray J, let me hear some on me. When you jacking off to this. Yeah. And when you really just in your zone. Yeah. Go hard on them on and then he's he's in the gym and he's like, I can't play that out loud. Who is currently linked with uncut gym star Julia Fox. Yeah, Kanye West is with Julia Fox, who's got so much talent. Ye even mentioned Pete in the lyrics of his song, My Life Was Never Easy. Which it makes no sense. I died in 2002, but I was brought back to beat up somebody who was eight, year old, who was eight years old at that time. Like if there was ever a sign that Kanye West kind of jumped the shark, it'd be that moment. When he raps, quote, God save me from the crash, just so I can beat Pete Davidson's What? This line seems to reference a 2002 car accident the hip hop star was in that nearly claimed. No, it, re it represented the movie I Spy coming out and bombing in the movie. Of course it represents his car crash. I hate the celebrity news reporters that can't officially go on a limb and say what it is. They're like, we think when he had a lyric that said in 2002 when I was in the crash, we think it might have something to do with the car crash he was in. More after this. Um, Right here the, is the perfect description of bipolar, of a personality disorder, of ADHD, and what Pete Davidson goes through and I go through. This is a TikTok that went viral. It was Pete Davidson on a podcast, one of the nine things that Charlemagne the God does, who I'm a big fan of. And this is a 30-second clip from his 52-minute conversation he had with Charlemagne, and this is about depression. How often do you still battle with depression? Oh, I'm always depressed, all the time. Um, I have to constantly bring myself out of it. Like, I wake up depressed, but, like, I'm like, okay, now I know my steps, because, like, you learn from the real, like, now I have to go outside and be in the sun for a little bit, or go for a walk, or, like, start the day in this way. It's all just programming yourself to trick your brain, you know? Were you ever suicidal? Yeah, all the time. But I can't, because I got a mom and a sister and, like, a family. So, like, I've always been suicidal, but I've never had, like, the balls, you know? Oh, happy hot topic! Is Paris Hilton giving her stamp of approval on Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson's relationship? We've got the answer. So keep No, but can we see your tramp one? Happy hour. Happy hour. Hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment was brought to you by quadpod.com. Q O D P O D.com slash Ryan Hoffy. When I tell you that when you go there, that is the best podcast network in all of the universe. I'm a man of my words. I am featured on there. We are heard every Thursday at 5 p.m. East Coast time, 4 p.m. Central on zradiolive.com on the Odyssey. And the tune in app by searching up Z Radio Live or ZRadioLive.com. Happy hour. Happy hour. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Please don't be offended. He's sorry in advance. He never holds back and he speaks his mind. Someone hook me up with a flame. I'm having a look for. Err, uh, light him up. Midwad? Here. Encourage him in his habit. That's a good smoker. When did you start smoking? This morning. I rose my rooster. I'm going to tore up. We shall acquire some wine on the way to the mall. And then you can get tore up. And pass out in the hot sun. No! Happy Hot Topic! The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Watch out. Hoppy is about to rant. Not even a little bit of snow can keep Kendall Jenner from rocking a teeny bikini, but hey, at least she has an oversized pair of boots to keep her warm. Uh, that, that was great, Radio 101. I didn't have my mic on. Uh, also, uh, I'm pretty sure there's this picture where, well, they'll explain it, but I don't think Kendall Jenner was out there very long. Well, this isn't the first time Kendall's worn a bikini out in the snow. YOLO! And something tells me it won't be the last. 
Kenny is currently on a cute vacay out in Aspen, Colorado. Where's my invite? Oh, and decided to pack a little string bikini for the time being. Yeah, that sounds fun. Thankfully, she found the perfect time to wear it out. And would you look at that? What? She completed her little fit with a pair of giant fuzzy boots. Whatever. So she's out there doing a photo shoot. I'm sure she was really out in the snow for a long time. I'm sure she was there just hanging out. It wasn't a photo shoot for two minutes. And then she went into her nice huge mansion. It's very warm. Um, We have one more news headline, but I want to get the quick plugs in. Tampa Bay hot sauce.com. When I tell you that the Tampa Bay hot sauce company is the best in the Bay, I am a man of my words. I would not lie to you. Go to Tampa Bay hot sauce.com. And there has all the locations to where you can purchase their product. The locations is Whole Foods Market, Bells. I used to call it Bells. Hitchcock's Green Market, uh, Interbay Mead Market, Mermaid Secret Garden, Tommy's Fresh Produce Market, Joe's Farm Fresh Produce, Land and Sea Market, Kelsey's on Cortez, Great Grills and more, JJ Market, Rick's Reef, Big Race, Fish. You get the point. Go to TampaBayHotSauce.com. That's all the locations of where you can purchase their product in person. But if you don't live in Florida, don't worry. Don't have a panic attack. Even though you're missing out, you can order online at TampaBayHotSauce.com. And there, they also have recipes for the spicy Applewood smoked chicken sandwiches, Louisiana red beans and rice, and spicy buffalo chicken dip. So with the NFL playoffs happening right now and that big game a few weeks away, you definitely want to get the right hot sauce. This has also been brought to you by Rich Kaylee Master Barbershop at richkbarber.com. Go there at Rich Keeley's Barbershop at Salon Loft. Good catch, Ryan. On Kennedy Boulevard, right next door to McDonald's. But you got to sign up for an appointment at richkbarber.com because he's always booked up, bro. And then here's the best part. When you go there, after you're signing up ahead of time, tell him I sent you and he'll hook you up. This has also been brought to you by FitsageFitness.com. Fit underscore Sage underscore Fitness on Instagram. When I tell you that Devin Prasad is the best trainer in all the Bay Area, I'm a man of my words. And if you don't live here, you can do virtual workouts. FitsageFitness.com. This has been brought to you by Amir Academy of Martial Arts at AmirAcademy.com. When I tell you that he is the best workout trainer when it comes to martial arts and boxing, 2700 22nd Street North in St. Petersburg, I'm a man of my words. Go there, amiracademy.com. This has also been brought to you by westchaseprinting.com. Westchase Printing on Instagram, DJ Tone Tampa on Instagram. Hell to the yeah. <laughs> Posters, business cards, yard signs, whatever the hell you need, go there. And this is, I believe I said them all. I believe I did. I believe I can fly. I probably should not be singing R. Kelly. Uh, you can listen on Stitcher, TuneIn, Spreaker, Apple Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, Amazon Music, Mixcloud by searching Hoppy Radio. H-O-P-P-E Radio. Hoppy in the morning is coming uh, very soon. So get on the bandwagon now. We got plenty of room. I'll take any listen I can get. Also, we have, we're on Google Play and Deezer as well. Twitter and Instagram is Ryan Happy Radio, Ryan Happy Radio, gmail.com, Ryan Happy Radio.com. You can leave me a voice on. I'll be sure to play it on there. 856 49 Hoppy. That's 856 494 6773. All righty. Let's finish up with this douche. See the pretty girl in that mirror there? Bill Murray treated some unsuspecting New Yorkers to an unforgettable surprise. Ah, uh, it would be pretty forgettable because it's with Bill Murray and that old man. Yeah, he's got a big fan base, but he's pretty irrelevant with people from 2022. So he's always got to crash a wedding. I'm Bill Murray. I want you to be there. Get away. Go away. The French Dispatch star shocked everyone with a pop-up musical performance in Washington Square Park on Wednesday. Man, nothing sadder than a guy just thinking, everybody wants to see me. I was in Caddyshack. That was 40 years ago. That's the amount of time that was between 1980 to 1940. No one cares. Documentary film director and social media personality Nicholas Heller, a.k.a. New York Nico, yeah. captured the moments before Bill's big moment. What's the plan? So you're just gonna you're just gonna show up and surprise everybody? Or? Yeah, I'm Bill Murray. I just assume that everybody wants me there to just perform. Get out of there. What? I think so. I think Is there a the subtle plan. reveal with the mask? Or? I think so. I'm gonna keep the mask on. <laughs> God, he's a tool. Happy hour. Happy hour. 
Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. And like that, he's gone.